Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and let's take a look at how the Unity short video I made called Sometimes Your World Changes Before Your Very Eyes was made. Now, the whole premise of this video is basically we start off in this rather bland looking room, and then it turns into something really creepy and haunted and just intense. And it really is very simple how it was actually done. So to give you a bit more of an insight to it, I'm going to press play now to actually render the scene together. If you've seen it, you'll know it starts like this. But if I go to the scene view, you'll see exactly what's going on. You can see the camera shifting around, doing what it needs to do. And it'll render everything it sees, so it turns everything. But the key moment is when it comes to here and switches. So we can see everything change in that instant. And you can see this weird eyeball thing kind of looking everywhere we move. Nice and easy. Skeletons appeared up there, blood dripping down the walls. And obviously the words here have changed. So we can see get out. So basically what I did to make all this happen was I had two uh, kind of contained objects. One's called Freaky, weirdly enough, and one's called Normal, and both are almost exactly the same. If I turn Freaky on, we can see that that has a couple more objects within the scene, so we can see the bottle here is lying down, the skeleton is appearing in the chair, and this eye is right here. The key to all of this as well is post-processing. Now, post-processing uh, is on one camera, and only one camera, which is this Freaky Cam. And I use the post-processing to turn on, and that is what we see when, you know, it's dark here and it's creepy and just kind of all sorts of weird. And like I said, the key to it all is shifting from this section to this section. And that's all done via a C-sharp script. And that C-sharp script is not exactly difficult. It was something which I kind of defined everything I need to define, so think of like the cameras that I need, the fade in and fade outs, the sound effects, and the objects themselves, they were all defined as variables. And at that key moment, when you hear the thunder sound, everything changes around. And you can think of it as a way of bringing, for example, the skeleton and this blood on the wall and this evil kind of spray painted on the wall and this eye, they're all contained only within the freaky game object. So you can see here the sequence is basically waiting for a little bit, turning the screen from black to so we can see it and setting the camera active so it starts animating. And then after 11 and a half seconds, it fades out. And then after three seconds, we do everything else. And it turns things on at the same time as it turns things off. So we can see that the thunder gets turned on so it plays. The wind then gets turned on so you can hear that sound effect more vibrantly. And then as we go on, we have that weird little laugh as we start looking at that eye. So really, the whole thing is just a sequence of events. So if I turn both freaky and normal on, and we'll use this panel here, if I turn this panel off in the normal section, we can see that the evil one appears. Also worth noting that there are different materials applied to each of these objects in different scenarios, because if we turn the floor off in the normal section, which is the first section of the video, we can see that it does change its quality and texture when we come to the freaky version of it. So like I said, the best way of actually seeing how this was done is simply watching it in the scene view. So as you would normally see if you've seen the video, it starts off like this, and then we kind of zoom out from the fire, and the fire doesn't look fantastic, but that's just the way it is. The whole thing is meant to you know, give the impression of it's just changed. And I particularly like how this whole thing renders with the post-processing, which we'll take a look at in just a second. So once again, you can see everything's changed. But then you can see the post-processing really gives it that extra kind of look. Because it doesn't look like this in the scene view. It's the background in the scene view. Post-processing really adds to it. So I kind of made it as dark and creepy as possible. Like I said, the key to it all is just switching things out for one another. And I think that is what makes it pretty awesome.